welcome to the second part of the five circle line driver's eye view. In this program, we shall be returning to Edinburgh from Glenrothesford Thornton along the east coast of Scotland, calling at Kirkcaldy, Kinghorn, Burnt Island, Aberdour, Dalgetty Bay, Inverkeithing, North Queensferry, Dalmany, Edinburgh Gateway, South Gale, Haymarket, and finally Edinburgh Waverley a total journey time of around 65 minutes. Glen Rose with Thornton was opened in 1992, just four years since Thornton West Junction was reopened, bringing the Five Circle Line back whole and giving both communities a station for the first time since the 1960s. Our train for our return to Edinburgh consists of a three-car Class 170 Turbostar, a Bellio Scott Rail currently manages the largest portion of the 170 fleet of 55 units. However, this fleet is in the process of being decreased to just 34 units. We pass beneath the A92, and the line to our left diverges to Thornton North Junction, whilst we turn south to Thornton South Junction. The former station of Thornton was located between these two junctions. We are now on the Edinburgh to Dundee line. Apart from Glenrose with Thornton and Dundee, there are services to Aberdeen, Perth and Inverness. The line was originally opened by the North British Railway in stages from 1845 to 1847 and is still an important main line for Scotland, with services being operated by Scott Rail, cross country on the Devon Scott service between Plymouth and Aberdeen, the Caledonian Sleeper from London to Aberdeen or Inverness, and the LNER's Northern Light Service, which runs from London King's Cross to Aberdeen.
Palace was the site of Randolph Sidings and its signal box, first established in the 1850s to serve the Dysart Colliery and Randolph Pit. The site was closed in 1968. This was the site of Francis Junction on our left, for freight services to the once Francis Colliery. It is now an industrial estate. To our right was the site of some sidings and the junction with the former tramways power station of Kirk Caldy. To our left was Kirk Caldy Harbour Junction for freight services. The signal box that once controlled the junction closed in 1968. The junction along with the line to the harbour followed in 1984. The station was opened in 1847 by the Edinburgh and Northern Railway. It was rebuilt in 1964. In the late 80s, the southbound platform was destroyed by fire and had to be rebuilt. Work was completed in 1991. Today, Kirk Caldy is an important intermediate station, with 13 trains both north and southbound every hour. Most services are operated by Abellius God Rail, using the Fife Circle Line, or to Perth, with the Caledonian Sleeper, Cross Country and LNER also using this station. Leaving Kirkcaldy, we pass a cross-country service to Aberdeen, consisting of a four-car Class 220 Voyager and a five-car Class 221 Super Voyager.
cross Invertel Viaduct, which opened with the line in 1847. It is 143 yards long and has eight arches. A branch line once passed beneath the viaduct from Seafield Branch Junction to the harbour of the same name. Here was the site of Invertail Junction and the southern end of the former Cowdenbeath and Kirkcaldy Railway, otherwise known as the Kirkcaldy District Line. The line reached the junction in 1894 and was used for both passenger and freight services. This line and the Seafield branch were closed in 1960. Here the line runs along the coast of the North Sea as far as Abadawa. To our right, just before Kinghorn Viaduct and the station, was the site of the junction to Burnt Island Oil Works. The viaduct is just 53 yards long. The station opened with the line and was expanded in 1895. It once had its own goods yard, which was part of the Burnt Island Oil Works. Today's services consist of two trains an hour in both directions, operated by Scott Rail. We enter Kinghorn Tunnel, 265 yards long. To our left was the junction to the Petticure Salt Works and Harbour. On our right is the A921, which runs parallel with our line to Burnt Island.
are approaching Burnt Island and cross the Burnt Island Sea Wall. This was the site of Burnt Island East Junction, which diverged to our left just after the sea wall. Freight services used the junction to serve the busy Burnt Island Harbour and docks. The junction and the harbour lines opened in 1901. The East Junction closed in 1979, and by 1993, all the harbour lines were gone. We passed the site of Burnt Island Junction. This junction was reinstated after East Junction closed, but lasted until 2010. The station opened in 1847 as the southern terminus for services from the Edinburgh and Northern Railway. The station served as an interchange with the now disused ferry service to Granton, just north of Edinburgh. The current station dates from 1890 and sees two trains an hour in both directions. There was a serious collision that took place here at Burnt Island. On April the 14th, 1914, a North British Railway H-Class steam locomotive named Old Ricky was pulling an express train when it collided with a freight train. There were two fatalities. The cause of this accident was by signalman error. We cross Burnt Island Viaduct Dating from 1888 and opened in 1890, when the fourth bridge was opened, along with its more direct route to Edinburgh, the nine-span viaduct is 193 yards long. Now rejoin the North Sea coast to Aberdawa. As we start to head inland, we begin to climb at one in a hundred.
On the approach to Abadawa was the site of the former goods yard. It closed in 1964. Opening in 1890, after the opening of the fourth bridge, and gets two trains an hour in both directions, Abadawa Station has its own gardens, which are cared for by the locals, so much so that the station's gardens have won numerous awards over the years. Leaving Abadawa, we now head inland towards Inverkeithing and start to climb, averaging at one in a hundred. The line now starts to descend all the way to Inverkeithing, averaging at 1 in 94. On our left was the junction with a single freight only line to the inner bay of Inverkeithing by a hill end. It closed in 1946. We are approaching the station of Dalgetty Bay and pass the former Fuldale Railway which passed beneath our line from Cowden Beath to St David's Harbour at Inverkeithing Bay. Originally a wagonway which transported coal and other minerals dating from 1766. In 1867 the wagonway was converted to support steam locomotives. The line was closed in 1946 
after 180 years of unbroken operations. The original station opened in 1942 as Donny Bristol Holt, only to be closed in 1959. The current station opened in 1998 and gets two trains an hour in both directions, with one of these trains terminating at this station. past the site of the original Donny Bristle Holt station. This is Inverkeithing North Junction, which connects services with the Fife Circle line via Dunfermline. We now converge with the Dunfermline route at Inverkeithing Central Junction. Once again, we arrive into Inverkeithing Station. Opened in 1877 by the Dunfermline and Queens Ferry Railway, in the 1880s it was taken over by the North British Railway. The station and the line was reopened in 1890, following the completion of the fourth bridge. Today, Inverkeithing gets served mostly by Abellio Scott Rail, as well as the Caledonian Sleeper, Cross Country and LNER. As we leave the station, we get a better view of Inverkeithing's South Junction for freight services to the dockyard at Rosith. We enter Inverkeithing Tunnel, which is 418 yards long.
Here we can accelerate to 65 miles per hour up the 1 in 70 incline, unlike the 40 to 50 miles per hour speed restrictions on the northbound line. As we cross the 244 yard long Jamestown Viaduct, we get a good view of both the 4th Road Bridge on the left and the Queensferry Crossing on the right, which carry the A900 trunk route and the M90 motorway over the 4th estuary. We enter North Queensferry Tunnel, which is 460 yards long, and arrive into the station. Originally the tunnel was a deep cutting, but was given a tunnel roof in the 1980s due to opposition from the local landowner at the time. Opening in 1890, it replaced the station at North Queensferry Pier, which opened in 1874. Today's station sees four trains an hour in both directions. We now cross the northern viaduct of the 4th Bridge itself. Considered the symbol of Scotland, the 4th Bridge is a worldwide icon and was voted as being Scotland's greatest man-made wonder. The bridge itself is now a World Heritage Site, protected by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation. The Cantilever Bridge is one and a half miles long and carries the Edinburgh to Aberdeen line across the 4th estuary. The fourth bridge took eight years to complete, beginning in 1882 and opening on the 4th of March 1890 by the Duke of Rosy, with its much more convenient and direct railway from Edinburgh. Its engineers were Sir John Fowler and Sir Benjamin Baker. From its opening until 1919, the fourth bridge had the world's longest single cantilever bridge span at 521 metres, until the Quebec Bridge in Quebec, Canada was completed, with its cantilever span being at 549 metres.
The original station was opened in 1866 by the Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway. It was replaced by the current station in 1890 when the fourth bridge was opened. Today it gets four trains an hour in both directions. The line to Glasgow via Falkirk High diverges to the right at Dalmeny Junction. This was the site of Turnhouse Station, opening in 1897 and closed in 1930. We pass Edinburgh Airport to our right, which was established in 1947. There was once a freight-only branch that served the area during the First and Second World Wars, but has now disappeared.
The station opened on the 11th of December 2016 to serve as an important interchange with the Edinburgh Tram Network and the nearby International Airport of Edinburgh. The station gets three trains an hour from Abellio Scott Rail, two trains for the Fife Circle Line via Kirkcaldy or Dunfermline and the one train for Perth, Dundee or Inverness. Class 170 turbostars were built by Bombardier Transportation between 1998 and 2005. A total of 139 units were built, with 119 being classed as a 170, consisting of either a two or three car set. Nine units were converted to Class 168 Type 2s and are managed by Chiltern Railways. The other 11 units were converted to Class 171s and are managed by Southern. They are the second addition to the Turbostar family of DMUs and have a top speed of 100 miles per hour. Each carriage is fitted with an MTU Friedrich Suffern engine which produces 422 horsepower each, giving a total power output of 844 horsepower for the two car sets and 1266 horsepower for the three car sets. These units were designed to replace the aging trains from the 50s and 60s on regional, long distance as well as commuter services. Apart from Scott Rail, the 170s are managed by Cross Country, East Midlands Railway, Northern Trains, Transport for Wales and West Midlands Railway. The original station was located at Swords and Junction, where the Fife Circle and the North Clyde lines meet, until the station's closure in 1921. Today's station dates from 1985 and receives two trains an hour in both directions.
now approach Saunton Junction, where we join the North Clyde Line from Glasgow and pass the site of the closed station of Saunton, which is now Saunton Tram Stop, part of the Edinburgh Tram Network. The Edinburgh Tram Network passes overhead and runs alongside our line as far as Haymarket. Past the tram stop at Bolt Green, which is on the site of the former railway station of the same name, which closed in 1968. To our left is Murrayfield Stadium, which is home to the Scottish Rugby Union. The stadium is the largest in Scotland and the fifth largest in the United Kingdom. We also pass Haymarket Train Maintenance Depot, which manages Scott Rail's Class 158s, 170s and the Class 43 HSTs. Opposite the depot is the Edinburgh Suburban and Southside Junction Railway. On the approach to Haymarket, we pass the line converging from our right, which is the line from Carstairs via Slateford. Opening as the original Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway Terminus in 1842, only to become a through station in 1846, when the Northern Haymarket Tunnel and Princes Street Tunnels were opened to connect with Edinburgh Waverley. The station has been through several alterations and redevelopments over the years, the most recent being completed in 2013. Today it is the 7th most busiest station in Scotland and is mostly served by Scott Rail along with the other franchises that use Waverley Station. It is also an interchange with the Edinburgh Tram Network. We leave the station and into Haymarket North Tunnel. Both Haymarket tunnels are 1,040 yards long. The North Tunnel was the original, opening with the extension to Edinburgh Waverley from Haymarket on the Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway in 1846. The South Tunnel was added when the line was quadrupled in the 1890s, when the fourth bridge was opened allowing a connection from Edinburgh to Dundee, Aberdeen and Inverness.
we enter Princess Street Tunnel, 121 yards long, and pass beneath both the Scottish National Art Gallery and the Royal Scottish Academy. And so we arrive back into Edinburgh Waverley, after almost two hours of traversing on the Five Circle Line. The current station dates from 1868 and has a total of 20 platforms, which is served by Abellio Scott Rail, Avanti West Coast, Caledonian Sleeper, Cross Country, LNER and Transpennine Express. Our journey along the Five Circle Line has taken us around two hours to traverse. We have called at 18 stations, with us starting and ending at Edinburgh, and have come across the Forth Bridge, one of Scotland's greatest engineering marvels. <laughs> 